Hi, this is your Houston chiropractor, Dr. Gregory Johnson. We have Ryan back here with us today, and he had rotator cuff tear surgery three weeks ago now, right? Uh, three to four weeks, yes. Yeah, almost four weeks now. And we have been doing the rapid release technology rehab and passive range of motion, rehabbing his AC joint here and rotator cuff area, working on the anterior, medial, and posterior deltoid muscles and traps and rhomboids and levator scapula muscles. So we're going to continue that today. Today's number four, and we're documenting every one of these rehab sessions to show his progress. So let's take a look at your posture first here, Ryan. Okay, let's maybe you flex forward and backwards for me. And he's actually able to move his arm a little bit more on his own actively now, but we're still not ready for him to get back into any really active resistive type exercise at this point in time. It's too early for that in his phase of healing. At this point in time, we want to encourage a little active range of motion, but not a lot. But his arm's straightening out a bunch, as you can see, compared to having up on the sling from last week. Okay, Ryan, let's go ahead and decompress you first. Everybody likes your boots, by the way. <laughs> You said those were pretty comfortable for you too, right? Yes. Sir. What are they? Uh, twisted X boots. Twisted X boots for all those who, who love Ryan's boots. They're steel toe, right? Yeah, uh, no, sir. Oh, okay. Ryan, these are yes, sir. No, no that's not steel toe work boots. Yeah. They make them in steel toe and non steel toe. So, see, we're bringing his legs up to where they're parallel with the floor. That changes the angle in his pelvis and relaxes his lumbar paraspinal musculature. Now, you'll see a big difference. Oh, yeah. In the force that I used to decompress Ryan versus Cheryl Lynn in the previous video. And he's not kicking a whole lot today. But... No, too tilt, Ryan. No. Okay. Move your left big toe. Okay. Yeah, you're tightening up in your neck, aren't you? <laughs> a lot of times whenever you have shoulder injuries and, and post-surgical shoulders, you can feel things going up into your trap and into your neck. Okay, let's go over here on your tummy next. You better not playing basketball today. Okay, his left leg is about a quarter of an inch shorter down there, and it gets even when I bring it up. That tightens up a little in your little back right there, huh? Yes. Okay, so we're going to adjust his left SI joint and hip first. Notice I've got two contact points here. One's on the SI joint, and the other one's actually on the left hip. And now his right SI joint, I'm just adjusting that straight in the... 45 degree line of drive that the SI joint runs in. L5 is straight down to P to A. L4 is the same. Now L3, you notice the angle is changing a little, going more inferior to superior. There we go. L2. And there's L1. There we go. Good. Those lower thoracics are pretty tight. There. Okay, I'm going to put your head down just a little bit more, right? There we go. His tissue tightness is really pretty significant today. Had the whole weekend, huh? <laughs> yes. Oh, I better plug this in. You can even unplug it if you want. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I was going to say, hang on, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they saw you pucker enough when I <laughs> The turbonator, some people can handle it and some can't. It makes everybody pretty much white knuckle, though. <laughs>
soft tissue myofascial release instrument that penetrates down deep into the tissues. And this rapid release is also a deep penetration uh, tool. However, uh, it penetrates down through there through frequency as opposed to sheer pounding. That's why I call that turbinator my human meat tenderizer. But this is a much higher frequency vibration and therefore not quite as uncomfortable as the turbinator. And I'm using the broad diffused head to work on these paraspinal muscles and the lumbar spine and all the way up into his thoracic and trapezius on the right first. We're starting with the good side. Now rapid release technology has their own YouTube site and they've got some really good videos on there about the, the science of this and how this works creates the waveforms down into the tissues which help break up the fibrotic adhesions and scar tissue. And I'm doing this over his Terry's major and minor muscles here in his shoulder blade. And then on the posterior delt as we're laying down, the lateral deltoid, and then even around into the anterior deltoid while he's lying in this position, and then up into the trap, and into the cervical spine, because he's got some tightness there. Now I'm going to get a little more focused today with this smaller nod. Do you feel that a little bit more, Ryan? Mm -hmm. And you can probably really feel it right here between the four blades a little bit more. This may not seem like much from watching it on YouTube, but as, as Ryan can tell you, anybody that's had this done so far can tell you, it's a pretty significant vibration. But it really works good. I've used this on myself over the weekend, and Renee's used it on me, and I use it on her. with excellent results that actually last longer than the actual treatment time. So not only does it feel good while it's being done, but it lasts for hours afterwards, which is even better because it helps promote the healing process, influxing blood, oxygen, nutrition into the tissues. Got a couple knots through here, right? Mm -hmm. Feel those right there? Mm -hmm. Right here, too. Right here. So I'm going to go ahead and have you sit up next, Ryan, and I'm going to have you face towards your knee and take your shirt off if you don't mind. Pick up my trash here. Notice how I use my legs bending over there. Renee's getting tired holding the camera already this morning. <laughs> yeah. I normally don't help men undress, but he's post-surgical, so I'll be nice. No lewd comments out there. Okay. Please lift your chin. There you go. We always want to make sure the patient's in a good posture when we do this. And then right here is where the incision was made. You can see right here and right here. I can't get too close. What? I can't get close. Right. Yeah, Renee can't get too close because the actual frequency on this messes up the video. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's running at 150 hertz, which is pretty high speed. Right. I got a little thing on my iPhone that measures the frequency of it, like a guitar tuner. Right. So we're monitoring that, making sure it's, it's usually at 150. Sometimes it cycles up and runs a little bit higher, even. So we come around to the anterior delt. Now I'm going to go ahead and passively start moving his shoulder through a little bit of what we call circumduction and I'm going to do this slowly still and then abduction which at this point in time actively you haven't been able to get it up this high much have you so, so we're going to go ahead and continue stretching his ligaments and his muscles so that we can remodel 
the scar tissue into a fuller, normal range of motion because he's going through the healing phase of his injury right now, and the injury being surgery itself. Anytime you have surgery, there is injury to tissue surrounding the joints that's being operated on. And they will heal up with fibrotic adhesions and scar tissue if left untreated. This is the highest we've had your arm so far. Yes, sir. Is that hurting? It's a little bit. Yeah. You want to let it down slowly. You don't ever want to do anything quickly with a, a fresh post-surgical joint of any kind, whether that's your shoulder, your knee, or your wrist, your elbows, or whatever. You want to take things slow. And I'm going to kind of straighten his elbow out a little bit here. To, there, that's a good full range of motion there. I'm going to get back here into his trapezius muscle on this one too. And then work on up into the lateral deltoid. So the lateral deltoid is what's responsible for abduction, which is where you elevate your arm sideways. And the anterior delt right here, which is right over the AC joint right here, which is where he had the surgery. And they clipped off a spur in there too, didn't they? Yes, sir. This is a pretty good little weightlifting morning job for me just to lift Ryan's arm up. I'm going to work all the way up into his cervical spine and traps here with this today too. So this is not 100% full range motion yet, but it's a whole lot better than it was those first couple of days. Yes, sir. And this is the most you've had it moved, I think, so far, right? Yes, sir. And again, we let it down slowly, and then I change the head a little bit as we move back into his traps here and into his lower cervical, and you can tell by his reaction that that's getting a little more focused. Follow his deltoid around, lateral deltoid. You can pretty much just follow the muscle all the way around, the anterior deltoid. I like using the diffuse head over the actual incision area. And we want to keep his elbow straightened out because he's been in that sling for two weeks post-surgery. So that's... When you have surgery, you don't want to wear a sling for too long a period of time because once you get out of that, that's all you'll be able to do with your arms over in that same position. Okay, we're going to let it down slowly. Now today's the first day I'm going to actually have Ryan actively move his own shoulder. So Ryan, go ahead and start abducting, lifting it straight up slowly according to what your comfort level is as I'm doing this. So this is called active exercise. This is not active resistive, it's just active. He's just lifting this up on his own power. That's causing some pain right there, huh? This should reduce the amount of pain though compared to... And I'll help him a little bit. Go ahead and actively lift it just a little bit more. We don't want to do too much too soon, so we're going to take it slow. Okay, you can relax it down slowly. sharing this opportunity with this to rehab your shoulder. Yes, sir. This works on any joint, the knees, the shoulders, elbows, wrists, carpal tunnel syndrome is a big one. It'll help. 
Okay, so let's come over here and shoot you still. Ryan's the only guy that's in his head size that I'll pull his leg and shoot him when he doesn't beat me up. Hey, did you pull his leg? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Be quiet, Randy. Okay. <laughs> I'll pull his leg backwards. Yeah. Yeah. You betcha. Yeah. <laughs> Renee's been acting like Fargo woman here. Yeah, yeah, be quiet, honey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Now let's try that again. See if this feels any easier than the first one. Got good full range of motion. Yep, looking good there. Move your left shoulder around just a little bit, Ryan. Tell me if that feels any easier at all right now than it did when you walked in. Yes, it does. Okay. Feel a little warmth down in there right now? Yes, it does. Good. good. Well, this actually gets the metabolism in the cells going up and rehabbing his left shoulder. This is session number four case study on Ryan's rotator cuff tear repair. And this is your Houston chiropractor, Dr. Gregory Johnston from Advanced Chiropractic Relief in Houston, Texas. We'll see you next time.